Here are the four methods I've tried to laser engrave panels. The first one was just laser engraving on uh, birch plywood. This is three millimeters thick. Uh, a 12 by 12 sheet runs about two dollars these days. Um, this is what it looks like when it comes off the laser engraver. Uh, you can see that there's uh, residue left on the surface. If you sand that and hit it with uh, a can of compressed air, such as this, or use an air compressor, uh, it will completely eliminate all of that and make for very sharp lettering. Uh, this is a method using uh, a raster engrave. Uh, so it works kind of like a dot matrix printer. The laser head goes back and forth and each time it goes across an area that needs to be cut out it shoots a beam so it'll flash on and off as it as it goes back and forth this takes a little while to do something like this I think this was about 20 minutes um, but you end up with much more distinct lettering uh, I will show you a picture of a panel that I've made out of wood I've sanded it stained it and put on two coats of clear and between the uh, first and second coat, I sanded it at 300 grit as well. Um, you can make all different size holes and shapes. I've uploaded a number of them to Thingiverse. Those are great patterns. Uh, some items are odd shaped holes, uh, either a D shaped hole to stop the device from turning, or like with an Anderson power pole connector, they can be uh, a more complex shape. Um, I wanted something that looked more military. Uh, I really like the aircraft look of panels. This method uh, was demonstrated by the Warthog Project channel on YouTube. Uh, the guy has made a complete Warthog A10 simulator. It is incredible. Um, his method that he used is he took a piece of white acrylic and laser cut everything as a first step and then once it's cut you remove it and you spray the entire thing with multiple coats of this rust-oleum primer and paint uh, this is a flat black I got this from Amazon and then you put it back in the laser engraver and then you go ahead and do a raster engrave for all the text. And the reason that you do it in two steps like that is because all the edges where they're cut would show up uh, as white. And his uh, method actually was used to backlight the panels. Um, he used green LEDs which emulate uh, what you would see in a military aircraft. Hopefully that'll show up on camera. Um, he also put another layer below it. It's uh, an opaque layer. And the idea is that it helps diffuse the lighting so you don't end up with a hot spot. This is without it. If you put the LED right up against it, you can see that it illuminates just a particular spot. And if you diffuse it, it spreads it out nicer. But uh, what he was doing was putting a whole array of LEDs across the back. And he actually had yet another layer that was black. And he drilled it and mounted the LEDs in it. Um, if you do something like that uh, with the types of switches that I have, you'd have to cut these openings on this layer and the next layer much larger. Uh, these switches that I have are intended to mount into a panel up to an eighth of an inch uh, which is three millimeters and if you look you can see the locks grab and now it's in there tight um, if this was any thicker it would be in the way of those latches so that method worked really well the only thing that I didn't like is if it's not actively backlit the text is rather dark uh, this is another material that I used. 
this one came from Delvey's Plastic. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, out of everything I tried, this one actually looks the best as far as a contrast between the lettering and the background. Uh, came out really nice. It was the same method as everything else as far as using a raster engrave. So again, probably about 20 minutes to do a panel this size. Uh, the nice thing about this is you don't have to paint it. It is already a laminate. It is black on the top and white underneath. Um, let's see, looking at my settings here. I used about four milliamps of power on my K40 laser. Uh, that worked out to be great. The trick on engraving plastics is to turn off the air assist. Uh, you want it to vaporize all the material in here and you don't want a specific sharp line in the valley of all the letters. Otherwise, um, you'll be able to see grooves where the laser has gone back and forth. If you leave the air assist off, it obliterates everything in the trench of the letters and it comes out really crisp. Um, because this panel is so thin and flexible, um, I ended up getting another piece of material. So this is a uh, one and a half millimeters. I got a piece of clear that's also one and a half millimeters. And the idea with this is you can put the two together Let's see if I can do this one-handed. And when you snap the switch in, it'll actually lock the two pieces together. So now they're locked together. Um, of course, it has mounting holes for the screws, and those will also help uh, lock it in. Um, this was the first iteration of the design that I was going with and modified it a little bit for the the final look that I was going for. The only downside to this is it does not cut well. Um, it'll be really hard to see. I'll try to take a still shot and put that in here. But the edges of this actually curl up a little bit and you can kind of hear it catching and while it doesn't really matter for the switches, it does matter for the edges. And I don't want that lip to be raised. So my plan was to take a couple pieces of that um, Baltic birch plywood and bolt them together and have this slightly undersized and this slightly oversized and screw it all together and put it on my router table with a flush trimming bit and mechanically carve off the edge all the way around and that would make for a, a perfect cut. But while I was looking at that, I went with a different material. Um, this is, um, I'll show you the, um, the name brand. I think it's Trolays. Uh, this is a much different material. This is also three millimeters thick and it is similar to this other material in the way that uh, it's engraved at four millimeters or sorry four milliamps. Um, the difference is this cuts really nice. The edges are not raised so when it comes off the laser cutter the only thing that I had to do was take a little bit of alcohol. I have these alcohol prep pads. You can use isopropyl alcohol. Works just as well. Um, I think the way that they bonded the top and the under layer together is with some sort of adhesive. And when it is cut, it leaves a sticky residue. Well, you take a little bit of alcohol and you give it a quick wipe around the edges and it completely removes it. It doesn't damage or um, dissolve any of this top coating and it comes out really nice and a nice advantage to this one is if you decided to uh, backlight it now that I'm done shorting out my power supply um, 
This last material can also be backlit. Uh, they have this material in all different sorts of uh, top finishes and color below. I've ordered uh, some material that looks like brushed aluminum. Um, you can get it that looks like wood grain. I have some of that coming as well. Uh, I can see a lot of potential use for this type of material. Well, hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.